A couple months ago, we've covered Eugenia and how she was made fun of by Charles II. Now we are going to see another woman whose protruding posterior landed her a career as a circus exhibit in 19th century London. This is the tragic story of Hottentot Venus and my recreation of how she might have looked in real life. Her life doesn't start well. Her mother died when she was an infant and her father was killed by a bushman. Sarah was a woman of the indigenous Coco people of the southwestern area of Africa. At 4 feet 10 inches high, she was exhibited in London and France for her substantial levels of tissue on her buttocks and thighs. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Born in 1789, her birth name is unknown, so they called her Sarah Bartman. She was born into an indigenous hunter-gatherer nomadic family called the Coco. Unfortunately, her parents were enslaved and put to work on a farm where her mother died and her father was killed while on duty years later. She was described as being independent and hardworking. Sarah predominantly spent her childhood on European-owned farms in South Africa, and in the 1790s, a free black trader named Peter Cesar met her and encouraged her to move to Cape Town. It is unsure if her family introduced her to Peter or if she went willingly or unwillingly. But she lived in Cape Town for at least two years, working as a washwoman and a nurse for Peter's family, then to a Dutchman and finally a wet nurse for Peter's brother, Hendrik. Probably homesick, she had to learn to navigate her new life swiftly as events unfolded rapidly for Sarah which would fail to cease. We know she had two children during this time, but neither survived. She found love with a poor Dutch soldier, but unfortunately he too didn't stay long as he had to move on with his regiment. So left without any prospects, Hendrik then began to show her in the city hospital in exchange for cash. Here, a surgeon named Alexander Dunlop had a side business supplying showmen in Britain with animal specimens. They had an idea. Perhaps her oversized posterior would make their fortune. He encouraged her to go to Europe because there she could earn money for herself, he said. Initially, Sarah refused the opportunity, but the surgeon was persistent, eventually persuading her. She only agreed if Hendrik would go with her, he too refused, but changed his mind. What was so intriguing about Sarah? Her condition called steatopyge, which was a genetic buildup of fat in the buttocks region, was considered a novelty. In the early 19th century, people were intrigued by the fascinating and the weird being displayed in popular exhibitions. Sarah's unique shape was exactly what the crowds would be attracted to. There was an affidavit that confirmed their intention. It stated, He had then on her way from the Cape, a female Hottentot, of very singular appearance, that she would make the fortune of any person who showed her in London, and that he was under an engagement to send her back in two years. 1810, they arrived in London, Sarah together with the surgeon Alexander and Hendrick. Sarah signed a contract, but it was in every way not in her favor. It was in English, a language she has yet to learn to read. She didn't keep a copy, and as such, Hendrik and Alexandra could modify it as needed to safeguard themselves. This contract, though, gave her hope. It stipulated after five years she could return back to South Africa with a portion of the earnings. People came to see her because they saw her not as a person, but as a pure example of this one part of the natural world. She never allowed herself to be exhibited nude. Instead, Sarah was thrust into the stage in Piccadilly in a skin-tight, flesh-colored getup, complete with a panoply of African beads and ostrich feathers. Sarah then became known as the Hottentot Venus. Hottentot, which is a colonial term for her indigenous cocoa background, and Venus for the goddess. Her exhibits got the attention of the African Association and African institutions. Slavery usage just ended in Britain in 1807, a few years before she arrived, and her display unsettled people. So Hendrik and Alexander were taken to court. 
They were accused of forcing her against her will to display herself as if property. Has she not as good a right to exhibit herself as an iris giant or dwarf? They said. It explains freak shows made celebrities but under their own free will. Does Sarah have that same right? They of course said yes, but it's her testimony that was interesting. If she said no, she would return to South Africa where surely she would have resumed a life of servitude. Answer yes, and it's a continued exploitation in England where she at least received a small wage and a modicum of freedom. Sarah, it seemed, preferred the latter. Though the option was palatable only if swallowed with a healthy dose of alcohol, something that became an addiction as her years wore on. So she continued touring where she gained fame and some pocket change. As quickly as her situation rose though, it also went down. In 1814, age 25, Hendrik handed her over to a predatory showman named Rio in an undisclosed deal. He brought her to Paris, where he need not worry about slavery charges. She was in effect there, enslaved. He exhibited her under more pressured conditions and was harassed by many scientists who wanted to examine her. Biographers Craig and Scully said, By the time she got to Paris, her existence was really quite miserable and extraordinarily poor. She died there a prostitute and penniless. Sarah was an intelligent woman with an excellent memory, particularly for faces. In addition to her native tongue, she spoke fluent Dutch, passable English, and a smattering of French. He describes her shoulders and back as graceful, arms slender, and hands and feet as charming and pretty. He adds, she was adept at playing the Jew's harp, could dance according to the traditions of her country, and had a lively personality. This was from Georges Cuvier a French scientist in 1817. Despite this positive description, which sounds more like of an animal than a human, she was of special scientific interest, and Cuvier preserved her brain, genitalia, and skeleton. She remained in museums for almost 160 years, until the removal of her skeleton in 1974, and her body cast in 1976. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and it allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions and I will see you in the next one.